The G Medical Innovation Holdings has been an interesting stock to look at recently. And in today's video, we're going to look at its price actions, the recent developments, some technical aspects, and my overall opinion on if you should be buying the stock. As the market is still very volatile at the moment, with significant downward pressure, we should be mindful of which positions to pick, as well as their individual timing and exposure. Before the video begins, if you would like to see more stock analysis videos like this one, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Looking back to where the stock was, I think that the main capital in the company's equity left a while back, leaving the retail traders in the float treading water, trying to see if there's ever going to be something allowing the company to bounce back, which it did for a number of occasions. That momentum may not last very long, because honestly, the stock has the proof to the market that it can generate handsome returns for its shareholders in order to hold the baseline or to go higher. And so far, it is too early to tell if this can happen. On the flip side of the coin, there's one thing that should grab our attention. If we look at the overall story of the stock, it definitely has its ups and downs, and there's a clear floor for whenever the demand is not here. There's also a lot of arguments supporting the theory that, much like what we saw in another company that we covered earlier called Ideonomics, the demand and the interest is cyclical and may come back every once in a while, given that the stock is going back to its floor at the moment. There's an argument to be made that even if a position is bought in the company now or within the next couple of months, the downside is much smaller than the potential upside. Keep in mind that this is a very small company in terms of market cap, so any movement can be significant. Not to mention, generally speaking, a more volatile shareholder structure favoring the short-term trading. Now, let's also take a look at the technicals of the stock. The trading volume of G Medical Innovation, or GMVD, has recently been around 2.3 million shares versus an average volume of 6.5 million shares. Over the previous 52-week period, its price fluctuated between $0.32 cents and $6.74. The trading volume is a metric that can tell you how many shares are being exchanging hands and if it's gathering a lot of attention. It often also gives us a first idea about the popularity of the company. When we use it to compare with the average volume, it can also tell us if the company is enjoying additional momentum to reverse its trend or to break through current resistance levels. Even when the current volume is lower than the average, it is an interesting indication because it may signify that a trend reversal may happen soon. The market cap of GMVD is at currently $20 million versus an enterprise value of $21 million. To put simply, the market cap is the fair market value the company has based on its current market condition, the company's reputation and other macroeconomic factors, whereas the enterprise value is usually the cost the company has already paid for its assets after paying off all the debts. It's worth mentioning that one of the most significant assets for much of the growth may be the intangibles, meaning they're not concrete items that you can see, feel, or touch, but rather their brands, intellectual properties, or schematics for new products, and these are really the pledges for potential growth in the future. For startups, most of their valuations are based on those intangibles, meaning if they were valued in very favorable market conditions, they can have a huge difference versus the enterprise value, giving a false impression to the market participants that a company is trading at a discount. It's only trading below its book value, but it doesn't mean that a company was undervalued. It's possible that a company was overvalued in the first place and is only now deflating back to somewhere normal. It's relevant to understand the shareholder composition of a company as this helps to determine if you should be holding the stock long term or to view it as a trade opportunity. If the stock is mainly held by retail traders, this could be a sign that the stock lacks the depth to justify long-term trust from shareholders. Typically, the consensus is that there should be at least 25-30% to 30 of institutional participation for the stock to be perceived as a sound investment and not just a short-term trade. Obviously, a lot of exceptions would apply since many titles are mostly held by retail investors and not institutional investors, but that tends to be the exceptions 
and not the rule. Let's also take a look at the short interest present in the stock, which is the amount of positions aiming to profit if the share price falls lower. Sometimes, there are significant short interest in the total volume, and this could be a sign that there's an organized shorting operation going on, such as what happened with GameStop and AMC. The current short interest is 4.4% of the total float and 10% of the transactions coming out from the dark pools. Usually, if the short interest is above 15% of the total volume and that a significant chunk of that volume happens inside the dark pools, it may suggest that there are institutional positions taken to short the stock and that there would be potentials for a short squeeze. My recommendation for GMVD is to treat it like a short-term trade and to hold it for a couple of weeks with small portion of your portfolio and to see if it'll jump. I would recommend to start thinking about realizing the gains once it reaches above 50% or so. I would recommend to commit between 0.5% and 1% of your portfolio in the stock and would also further recommend to split the allocation in batches of 20 to 30% at a time so that you can purchase more in case it further retraces. Now, given the current market environment, I believe that the equity market is in a vast phase of correction, especially when it comes to tech and growth type equities. The financial market has been living and breathing thanks to the continuous creation of new capital with different waves of quantitative easings, which will have consequences on the price of assets as well as their yields. With the interest rates kept relatively low over the years and the increase of amount of capital in circulation, this will keep putting significant pressure on the profit that we can expect the investment products across the board. And this, by the way, is a reality that may shift in the years to come if the interest rate of core infrastructures within our globally financialized system increases. It's useful to remember that the market doesn't represent the real economy, and of course, the real economy doesn't always reflect in the stock performance, since the name of the game here is ultimately called supply and demand, which depends on a whole bunch of factors that go way beyond our own control. If we think about it, this is like saying, if your neighborhood house that is put up for sale is only allowing those who actually want to live inside to buy it, versus if you allow every single type of buyer with different intent or reasons to buy or to sell it. So obviously, there will be a significant difference in the price of this asset for those two scenarios. The market currently works more like the second option, and assuming that it would only reflect the fundamentals of the underlying economy would correspond to the first option. There are a few elements that are considered to be the reasons. The first one is the significant increase of amount of money printed by the central banks around the world, which is then distributed to the banks with the expectation that they will be loaned to businesses. Normally, that's a good thing, but with a lack of opportunities in the real economy, the significant portion of that money actually went back to the financial system to buy up the price of existing assets. Now that the QEs have been wrapping up, or ended around the world, I think that this drive behind asset price may no longer be as relevant as it is right now for the future. It is now compensated by the arrival of capital from one region to another, and from one sector to another even within the same jurisdiction. With the increase of tensions around the world, capital is always looking for a safe haven to park their money into, not just for a place to grow the nominal value, but with a currency that tends to keep its purchasing power as well. The third factor is the creation or the birth of artificial bubbles either maintained by the market trends built up over the years or out of necessity. Capital needs to find a place to stay. Some good examples of this would include the EV sector in the 2020 and the oil and gas securities when there are tensions around the world. Either way, when it comes to the price trends of the market, the degree of uncertainty is a key drive behind the price fluctuations and that is likely going to increase as we go on from there. When company announce that they are going to enter or exit different markets, or that they will be trading on different platforms and exchanges, this can all have significant ramifications on the price of this asset. Some of the considerations to have when operating in this context include having a clear view of what is going on, especially 
regarding the cash flow and the capital flow, and avoid certain potential pitfalls. One of these is to be careful with short positions. Inherently, short positions are riskier than long positions as the downside of long positions is limited, whereas the short positions can lose you as much money as the stock price may reach, which is infinite. On top of that, we're now seeing a new phenomenon with short squeezes involving a group of retail traders propping the stock price up, forcing short sellers to recover their positions. Sometimes the attempt will not succeed, but sometimes they end up in very spectacular success. Something else to consider is to treat tech stocks with care. To start ask questions when the price of a security skyrockets without real fundamentals. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't be touching it with a 10-foot pole, but it does mean that there should be a difference between the decision of long-term holding and short-term trading. Either way, a rule of thumb is that each position should be structured in a way so that their individual performances will never affect the portfolio's stability. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel.